Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. Alice, the son of Nube is my name. And I hope you had a wonderful May Day yesterday. You know, there was a holiday that commemorates uh, the input that workers are making in countries, uh, economies. Well, it's a day of commemorating the good work that workers have done. Also, even uh, fighting for liberation, that is, if you're an African, uh, well, we haven't been uh, posting a lot lately because of a number of other commitments that we've had, but we are back and we are going to be posting a lot going forward. Uh, I, I would like to talk about the Zimbabweans in this particular video, uh, especially regarding the past few uh, incidences, or let me say the past two uh, calendar events. You'd know that uh, on the 18th of April, that is last month, uh, we celebrated what uh, the, the 44th um, anniversary of the country's independence from Britain. And then yesterday we were all celebrating May Day. And the questions that we've been asked about, among, I mean, the questions that have been asked by especially several Zimbabweans and fellow Africans is, are you proudly Zimbabwean? Are you happy with what you have right now? Are you believe that this so-called independence is worth celebrating? I've met a number of those questions, especially on social media, when I wrote that um, I'm celebrating Zimbabwe's independence, and then I wrote afterwards that I'm proudly Zimbabwean. A number of my friends, especially from South Africa and Zimbabwe, those who support the opposition in Zimbabwe, were on my case saying I must justify why I claim that I am proudly Zimbabwean. Well, uh, there are also other Zimbabweans who believe that or, or, or who argue that Zimbabweans were going to be better off or were better off uh, under the regime of Mr. Ian Smith than we are right now uh, under the so-called black government, under the so-called independent state that we we have <clears throat> and then the other one was do zimbabweans still need to celebrate uh may day considering that this is a date or a day that is set aside for workers the workforce in zimbabwe doesn't have any workers that is in the country so this is what i want to have a say on or to give you my own thoughts as you have been asking for me to give them and to explain a few things first and foremost i will talk about the independence uh it is very true that zimbabwe is independent and when we talk about independence we're talking about a country that is uh now having its own control that is having its government not having to report to any outside government and in that regard we do have a Zimbabwean government which reports directly to Zimbabwe. Well there are arguments as to who this government really reports to in Zimbabwe. You'd know about the Zesuru, is it Zesuru 24 that Inos Nkala once spoke about. You'd know about the cultism especially within our government. You'll know that there is a group of elites that are said to be controlling the government. But now, that is something else. Those cultists as Zimbabweans, they don't report to any outside government. Those elites uh, are a bunch of Zimbabweans who don't report to any other state. So, in as far as independence is concerned, Zimbabwe is an independent state in as far as outside influence is concerned we don't have as we had before 1980 a government that was a surrogate or a direct uh, a, a direct administration that was holding sway on behalf of a colonial state you'll remember that there was the union check flying 
in Zimbabwe, even after Ian Smith had declared independence from Britain, he still said that he still owes or pays allegiance to the British royal, that is, the Queen at that particular time, and now we have King Charles. So, there was the Union Jack flying, and at the event of independence, we had this Union Jack being pulled down and replaced by the Zimbabwean flag. So, that issue of us having our own flag, that issue of us having a government that should report to Zimbabweans directly without having to seek uh, any approval from an outside state or without having to abide by a law that is passed elsewhere based on the Berlin Conference. It shows that we do have uh, the independence that we want. But there is something that we lack, which I'll agree with you on. It is that we lack uh, freedom as Zimbabweans. Uh, Joshua Nkomo said, it is possible for a country to gain independence without its people being free. So this is what we are. This is where we are right now. While we, when we celebrate independence, we are celebrating the blood, sweat, and tears, as well as souls that were lost or invested in the fight for Zimbabwe's liberation. We believe that if we stop celebrating that, we are as good as scoffing at the efforts of those who put their life and limb at stake to have black majority rule. Well, we do have black rule, although we don't have majority rule. So this is the foundation that we have to build on. This independence is the foundation on which we have to build on to complete the liberation of Zimbabwe. We liberated the country from Britain, but we haven't yet liberated it from a system that uh, a system that uh, worked against the wishes of the majority of the population. Yes, we do have a black government. Yes, we do have black people presiding over the government as the majority. But we don't have the liberation that Zimbabweans as a whole require. That is why we are still fighting. That is why we are still in, in the trenches. So, in that regard, I will admit that in a for, I mean, uh, although we do have independence, we are still far off from being liberated as a Zimbabwean people. So we have to divide or separate the two in that when you ce celebrate independence, when you hoist the Zimbabwean flag, and when you sing the Zimbabwean national anthem, you are not paying allegiance to Zanu PF because there are people that are saying whoever is celebrating being Zimbabwean, whoever is celebrating Zimbabwe's independence, and whoever dons the Zimbabwean flag with pride is celebrating ZANU PF. And this is where we are getting it all wrong. ZANU PF is just a political party which happens to be in control of government. But ZANU PF is not Zimbabwe. There is Zimbabwe without ZANU PF. And we are still fighting ZANU PF because. We are as good as, as uh, any other Zimbabweans. We are Zimbabweans in equal measure because this is our birthright to be Zimbabweans. We deserve all the freedom that being Zimbabwean must bring. And because we don't have that freedom, we are fighting for it. That's why we are fighting against ZANU PF because they are pocketing what is supposed to be everybody else's birthright. So. We have to separate that. And once we say that ZANU-PF owns Zimbabwe, ZANU-PF owns the Zimbabwean national anthem, ZANU-PF owns uh, independence, uh, then we are saying that we don't have a right to fight for Zimbabwe. Yet we are fighting for Zimbabwe because we believe that ZANU-PF is stealing what belongs to many. It's stealing a country that should belong to many, stealing resources that should belong to men. So I believe that I have responded to your questions on that. And then on May Day, uh, it is so sad that 44 years after independence, 
the very people who became a motive force in the war against colonial rule. The workers, you'd know that uh, the people who uh, started the fight for Zimbabwe's liberation were, in the main, workers who were being denied the rights that they, they, they deserved. People were not being rewarded for the shifts that they put in. People were working for peanuts in a country which is their own. And as a result, they formed unions which came up with the Southern Rhodesian National, uh, the, Southern Af the Southern Rhodesian African National Congress that is shrunk, which gave rise to, which gave way to the NDP, uh, which gave way to ZAPU, which ended up delivering independence in Zimbabwe. So these are the people that have been sidelined in the fight for, or in the fight for the completion of the liberation of Zimbabwe, be it by the current ruling party, which is ZANU-PF. You know how ZANU-PF reacts to workers expressing their discontentment at the way the economy is going, at the peanuts that they are made to, to earn. So they have been sidelined by the ruling party and the opposition, which was formed by workers in 1999, has now sidelined them again in favor of students and cultist uh, leadership that the mainstream opposition has. So, and when you look at the majority of the Zimbabwean workforce, it is toiling uh, in foreign lands where they are doing manual jobs despite some of them having qualifications to live uh, a better life. They are still coming, especially to South Africa. Some are going to Europe uh, to work as uh, caregivers in Europe, to work in restaurants in South Africa. Some are even working as security guards. While they have degrees that should see them earning better money and sending their kids to school, supporting their families and supporting themselves and even building legacies that are going to last for ages for their children. Right now, uh, many are bearing children that become stateless, children that cannot write uh, senior certificates in those foreign countries because the parents do not have the documents that are necessary to register those kids and make sure that they sit for those examinations that are going to pave way for them going to uh, universities. So this is so sad because even those that remain in Zimbabwe are earning peanuts. They work 24-7 and when it comes to them having to earn their money, they have to queue at banks for ages without getting the little that they are being paid in as far as remuneration is concerned. While some have been swept out of the employment field and are now living as either hawkers on the streets or have been forced into doing uh, an orthodox, uh, engaging in an orthodox ways uh, of trying to act a living. And uh, as, an, as a result, they end up having to run, running battles with the police because they have uh, chosen a life of committing offenses. And then you have, again, here in South Africa, 400 Zimbabwean dead bodies being shipped across the border because people have died in foreign lands. And 95% of those people are dying in the hands of murderers. They are either shot, uh, dead, or knifed to death, fatally stabbed. Some by fellow countrymen who have chosen a life of violence to try and act a living uh, in neighboring countries where they cannot walk into the employment field as they would had they remained in their country under a progressive economy. So these are the things that we have to come together as Zimbabweans to try and resolve so that we return to our country. We're not going to be in South Africa forever and we don't have to think that South Africans are foolish or that South Africans uh, themselves don't have problems. We need to go back home but we need to create those conditions that will see us going back home so that while we are 
not going to all be successful. Even those who toil are going to toil in their home countries. Our social fabric continues to be, to be torn apart by the brain drain that is happening, the great trek to South Africa, the great trek to Europe, because we have failed to play our role of making sure that Zimbabwe works for the current and future generations. So this is what I had for you today. But please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video and share it. But also engage in these conversations which will see us create a better Zimbabwe for all. Thank you very much.